All right, welcome back to part two of my two-part movie. So, as you can recall from the first, um, from part one, we actually configured the router's interface, and we actually tested connectivity from PC3, which we mentioned was on the outside, and we tested that we were not able to ping the the far interface of um, of router zero coming from the outside. All right, but also we did not quite configure IP addresses for for these PCs over here in the internal network. So to do that, I'll just you know, we could go ahead and just assign static IP addresses, but you know, why not put this little extra in there? So I'll actually use DHCP. All right, so I go to config T and I go in and I said IP DHCP. And you could do the question mark and you see the options that are available there to you. This is really a scaled back version of the, um, the Cisco iOS. So we will just do the exclusion, which is exclude the excluded addresses. We're excluding one nine. We're excluding ten dot ten dot ten dot one because that's the interface that's actually assigned to the router, and we'll just go up to ten dot ten dot ten dot ten. Right. So what that what will happen is our first PC will actually be assigned dot eleven. And then we do IP, DHCP, and pool. And we'll have to give it a name. Just say lab pool. All right. We'll need to do now the default router. And the default router is nothing more than the IP address that is actually assigned to the, the interface of the router. So this will be the default gateway for the PC. And that's what we'll do. And um, we'll need to specify the network. So network, in this case, will be 10.10.10.0. And we're using it slash 24. So it's 255.255.255.0. And we'll just save that config. So with that done there, if we go over to our PC and we go to DHCP, it will just go out and it should find an IP address, right? Just like I told you, 10, 10, 10, 11. That will be the first one. So we don't have to manually do the IP address. And we could just do the same thing for all our other machines. So just let's just do this. And we'll see. It just got another IP address and we'll just do it for the last machine. And by the way, however many machines you add to, to the internal network, it will now get an IP address from our DHCP server, which is now running on the on the route. All right, so using PC1, we should now be able to ping our web server. So let's take a look at this. Ping uh, 172.31.0.100, right? And we're able to ping it no problems at all. Now comes the fun part. We'll start doing the NAT. All right, so the next thing that we will need to do, let's go on this outside router. So if we go on the outside router, we, um, we could go in the command into the interface. And again, we're going to go in the enabled mode, config T. And inside here, I'm going to put a, a routing statement. And the routing statement will say, this is how you do it, IP route um, 172.31. That zero that zero two five five that two five five that two five five that zero fa zero slash slash zero. So what I just did, I just told this router, which is router two outside, any time any traffic that you have to go to the one seventy two dot thirty one network with a subnet mask of slash twenty four drop it off to the FA00 interface. This is the interface that knows how to get to the DMZ. All right, and um, we can pretty much also, we could start putting in our NAT statement. To put our NAT statement in, we're going to say um, IP, IP NAT, right? And you could just do the question mark to see um, commands that are available to you. 
So we have three commands, inside, outside, and um, pool. All we're interested in right now is just inside, and again, source. So the inside source is 172.31.0.100, and you could do the question mark. I'm sorry. It's inside source, and you would do it's static, because we're doing a static map, guys. So we have to specify that, right? And we are not, we could actually do by protocol, so we could just do certain ports, you know, whether it's a TCP port or UDP port. This time we're not really worried about that. We're just saying anything that's coming from the internet on an IP address of 74.125.20, and let's use 100, will be natted to 172.31.0.100. So again, the command is IP NAT inside and the inside source, and it's a static address. The inside source address is 172.31.0.100, and it will be anything coming from 74.125, being that that's our outside interface, 20.100 will be forwarded inside. Right, and you notice there are no PCs in our network that's actually assigned the address 74.125.20.100 in any physical interface. So it's just a NAT translation that's going to be happening inside the router. Right, and we could save our config there. And now we'll get on the inside router. So the inside router would be this one, and we'll go to the command prompt. And from the command prompt, we'll go into the config mode. And I'll just need to put a routing statement in there. So I'm saying IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0 FA01. So what I just did, if you just follow the mouse and the canvas for a minute there, on this router I'm saying anything that you don't have a specific route for, regardless of whatever the subnet mask is drop it off to interface fa01 it will know how to get there right this route is essential because if we don't put the statement in what will happen anything coming from pc3 which is which is our internet pc will be able to get to the inside um the inside router to fa1 and it will also get to our web server which is located in our dmz however when the web server drops it back off to its default gateway which is on router zero Router Zero will not know what to do with it because Router Zero would not know how to get to 74.125.20 slash zero network. All right, so that's why it's important for us to do it. So now that we have done that, I'd say let's, we saved our config. So we made these two configs, put it in the NAT statements on the, um, on the Router 2, and also we put the routing statement on Router 2 and we put the, the default routing statement on router zero to go back to the internet. So let's go on our internet PC and let's see whether or not we can communicate to our inside network. So what we could do, we could actually try pinging. So if we do ping um, 74.125.20.100, let's see if we could get a reply. All right, so we're just there waiting a little bit, see what's gonna happen. All right, for some strange reason, it's it's not working. All right, so, and, and this is what networking is all about. Okay, now we see that it came online. All right, so it just took a little time, you know, to for everything to come online. So even though, guys, as you see, and, and that's why I love doing these videos this way. I like to do it in the live network. I, I really don't like to pre-stage anything, you know, I want you to see because, you know, I, I went ahead of myself just now and said that it was, it was failing, but you know, it, it takes a little time, I guess, for the settings to um, to take effect for us to start seeing the packets. All right, so we could see in our network that we have here once 74.125.20.100. There's nothing assigned on any physical interface with the dot 100 address, but the key is the statement, this NAT statement here that we put on our router. We're saying. This router knows how to get to the 172.31.0.100 network. The external interface of router 2, which is the internet face inside of that router, doesn't. 
On the internet, we know that RF1918 addresses, which is the private class, is 10.0.0.0 slash 8, you know, 172, 16.0.0 slash 12, and 192.168, you know, slash 24. You know, those addresses are not routable on the internet. So, in order for anyone to be able to reach those addresses which are on our network, what they have to do is that has to be um, that has to be translated. So the translation is happening right here. It's happening on router two, and this is a statement that that actually took care of that. So we're saying IP NAT, you know, the the inside source address. That's where the files are stored for a web browser. It's one seventy two thirty one zero one hundred, and anything that's coming from a routable internet IP address, which is seventy four one twenty five twenty dot one hundred, should be forwarded over here. And, and this statement is the one that does the trick. Of course, you know, as I explained to you guys before, up, you know, if you look at this config that I have um, further up, which is the IP routing statement, we had to put that statement in there because router 2 still needed to know how to get to the internal network, right? And if you notice, the internal network is not locally connected to router 2. It is actually on router 0. That's why we put that statement in there. And um, over on router 0, we, we had to put a statement to tell it how to get back. Notice we put a default statement because we don't know the, the network on the internet where this tra traffic is going to come from. And we need to be able to get back to whatever network it comes from. And that's why we put the default route 0.0.0. .0. And we don't care about the subnet mask either. But all we know is, pardon me, FA01 is the interface that could get us back to where we're coming from. And um, just to do a little bit more tests here, we could go back over to PC3. And going over to PC3 here, we could actually go to a browser. And if we went to a browser, we could test to see whether or not. By the way, if you don't know, Packet Tracer actually has a, a built-in web server. You could take a look at it. Um, these are the services that are available to you for testing. We have HTTP, DHCP, TFP, TFTP, DNS, and all that, you know, those goodies that are available in there. So we could actually go back to the internet or internet facing PC. And if we typed this IP address um, 74.125.20.10, we should be able to see the browser. All right, so let's try that again. We should go to the browser, and if we type, again, 74.125.20.100, which is the natted IP, the IP that's natted over to 172.31.100, we should be able to see the browser. And there you go, right? So we know that we can successfully get in from the... All right, so we see that NAT, you know, it fully works, um, guys. We, we also you know, want to look from, from the internal network and to see whether or not we could get to, um, we could get to the, the web server. Notice from the internal network, if we decided to type 74 dot, um, 125 dot 20 dot 100, you know, let's see what happens. I, I can tell you that it, it won't work. All right, you see request timed out because Internal network doesn't know anything about that IP. However, if we did the 172.31.0.100, we should get our web page. Okay. So as you see, coming from the internet, we have to use the um, the public IP address. Coming from the inside, we have to use the private address. I hope this was very informative for you, and um, I hope you will come back to see more of my videos. I want to thank you very much for taking the time out to look at this. And please leave your comments. And if there's anything that I could do to improve the quality or the way in which I explain anything on any of my videos, please don't hesitate to drop a comment and, and let me know about it. Again, thank you very much. And I do hope this was very informative for you. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks.